I go into places and I, this is what, how I say, I was like, listen, don't take any offense to what I'm going to tell you because there's one way to live in your house. Everybody lives in their house. And if you come to my house right now, it's a wreck, but we have to get it market ready. We have to get ready for market so that we can get the best dollar, best contract. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Sean and Matt Show. My name is Matt. That is Sean, and welcome to our show. Sean, in today's episode, we're going to get a little personal and talk about what's going on in our personal real estate lives. You have some, some big milestones happening very soon. I have some big milestones happening very yes. soon. But there's something else I want to get into first, Sean, is... The, the solar eclipse. Oh my the, gosh. The yeah. eclipse, the total eclipse. This happens every 500 years, but, but it's I remember also it happened happening like five years ago. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what are your, I have some, some takes and I don't want to be the guy that says eclipses are dumb and no one should look at it. Cause I, I think a very smarter person could, could have a conversation with me, convince me why this is like the coolest thing ever. But I, I'm kind of tired. I, I don't know if I'm an eclipse hater. I, I don't want to be a contrarian. I yeah. just, Talk to me about the eclipse. How do you feel about the eclipse? I, I feel like it's a, it's big hype because I remember it a couple of years ago and it was like once in the 500 years that happens on an April 8th, you know, <laughs> like, come on, dude, it's, it's an eclipse. It's very cool. I love solar things. I love planetary things. I'm into that kind of thing. So, but I've, you know, you got to look at it through like one of these little things so you don't burn your retina. So you got to be careful. Um, it's a, well, I thought it was supposed to go right over Arlington. It's, 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 it's not. The now. totality of it is not going to go right over. But, Sh Sean, I, I pulled up a graph. First of all, it's a map that shows the path of the eclipse. Then the second photo, do you know what this is? No. This is an occupancy photo of Airbnbs. Oh, my god! And so the red dots uh, completely match the length projection. of the projection. Thank you. Of the eclipse. So that is crazy, man. Well, That's what do you cool, think about that? I hey. mean, it's basically like people are traveling hundreds and maybe even thousands of miles to see this darn thing, and they're paying thousands of dollars for the Airbnbs that are in this path. It's amazing. This draw is crazy. I, I personally like I wanted to go away this weekend, and my daughter has a we had to sign off that she was going to be able to watch the eclipse at school. So at one o'clock and it's at school on Monday, they're going to be going outside and viewing the eclipse. So this is a big deal. Uh, I, I love it. I think it's really cool. I've never personally seen one where I could enjoy it. I remember when that was happening and it was like, don't look at it, you know, uh, don't burn your retina, you know, like, don't look at it too long. Look at it through this thing. So I don't remember seeing it that well. And I don't know that most of these people... And the other thing you're relying on is that, that it's clear that if day. it's cloudy, if it's it cloudy, just you're like, done. Yeah, it's, it's over. It's over. Yeah. So I'm not. I, I'm. I'm into it. I guess I'm reluctantly into it. Yeah. Again, I don't want to like sit on a hill and, and make fun of people that like eclipses because yeah. I think it's cool. But like, can we just see it and then move on with our lives? Yeah. It's literally. I don't know how long it lasts. Like it's a couple minutes, couple hours, uh, like maybe an hour. I maybe. think it starts at like, a certain point and then there's like a window where it's the, the, the total totality. Yeah. But I'm not a scientist. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's neat. I, I'm definitely interested in it. I like this kind of stuff, but people are spending a lot of money just to be able to see it and witness it. And man, what if it's cloudy? If you you're know? into the eclipse or if you're going someplace to watch the eclipse, drop a comment down below. Sean, For sure. Um, where this map doesn't go over is... Ocean City, where you just purchased, about to purchase a property. I am. What's yeah. going on with that? You got closing what? Today? Are you going to leave for Ocean City today, tomorrow? What, what's happening? I close on this property tomorrow. Tomorrow, Friday. Yeah. And, you know, it has been a process. You know, I, as, as a kid, little kid living in Pittsburgh, where did we go vacation? Ocean City, Maryland. So this is... This is a lifetime destination that's been for our family, and it's a it's a tradition. And so we've always dreamed of owned, owning a property in Ocean City or outside of Ocean City. And so over the last years, I've been kind of starting to research more and more about the properties. Over the last, what, eight months, I got my Maryland license back just for this purpose. I had my D.C., Maryland, and Virginia licenses, but you have to keep up on all that continuing education. And I'm like... I don't do a ton in Maryland. I'm letting it go. So I let it go for a while, but I had my broker's license in Maryland. 
So I had to get my broker's license back, which is a lot of studying and taking the test. And the test was not easy. Anyways, got that back so that I could then show myself the properties and write my own contract in Maryland. And so I've started looking and researching and I found this development called Ocean Pines. And there's a ton of people, everybody I talk to is like, oh, Ocean Pines. Yeah, sure. We know Ocean Pines. Well, I've been going to Ocean City all my life and I never knew about Ocean Pines because when you're going to Ocean City, you go right by it. You know, I think if you're just in your in your little bubble, yeah. you just always go to the same place. There could yeah. be a place five minutes away and you never I, I would never even know about it. Exactly. So you're just driving right past it. So if you if you look at Ocean City, it's an island out there and there are two bridges that go. There's 50th Street Bridge and there's a 90th Street Bridge. Well, just before you you hit that 90th Street Bridge, Ocean Pines is on the right hand side and it is like 8000 lots and a lot of them are, well, maybe a thousand, I don't know the exact number, are on the water. And so we looked at everything from $450,000 to $1.5 million, right? Anything on the water. What does $1.5 million get you? It gets you a pretty sweet house. Were you walking through Ocean Pines 1.5 and you were like, okay, yeah, this is worth 1.5? Or are you just like, yeah, this is fine? Well, coming from Arlington, yeah. I mean, these some of these are worth... A lot, you know, they, they feel like they're worth 1.5. But what the drastic difference is there's North North Ocean Pines just above Route 90 and then Southern Ocean Pines, which is south of Route 90. Northern Ocean Pines, the, ho the houses are smaller. And that's kind of where we started because we're like, all right, well, our budget is X. And so we started going through these properties. We went through one. We got pre-approved. I had an escalation, like ready to go for this property. All we had to go do is is go down and look at it. And so just so you know, I'm buying this with my brother-in-law, my sister and myself and my wife. So it's a split thing. And I couldn't afford this house by myself. So thankfully, we're able to do it together. So we all went down and we started looking at these houses thinking, all right, we're going to spend $700,000, all right, divided by two. And so we pushed that up a little bit. All right, we went to 800. So we looked at this house. This house came on at 799.9. We went down to see it. Before I went down, I'm like, I'm pumped about this. I talked to my lender, got pre-approved. And I'm like, all right, we're going to go to eight and a quarter. And we get there, we walk through the door and I look at my brother-in-law's face and I'm like, instantly I knew he didn't like it. And I didn't like it either. I'm like, wow, this is what 800 grand was it a you. dump? The how the, the lot was cool. It was right on the on the waterfront for eight hundred thousand. I mean, that sounds like a pretty 000. good deal. This is the thing you can find them in there for five hundred thousand. It just depends on what you want. You know, if you want a little bungalow for five hundred grand on the water, you can find it. Um, this was eight hundred thousand, but the house needed work. It was just beat up, and the agent's like, "Yeah, we have one contract. We're expecting another or two. And I'm like, "Really for this? Like." After I went through it, I'm like, I'm out, right? And I was willing to go to 825 for it before I saw it. Then I then I walked through it. I'm like, I'm, I'm not even writing on it. It ended up going for 850. I was really surprised wow. by that. So so what we did then was went to see a couple other properties. And there was one really nice one, but the waterfront wasn't perfect. And then we go through this one. And it was it's 22 Stacy Court. And this property was originally listed for $1.4 million dollars. And it was on for 241 days. They dropped to 1.25 million and it was still sitting. And I'm like, man, this is, this is what I want, but it's 1.25 million. This is way above my price point. What am I going to do? So, you know, my brother-in-law and I were both like, man, this would be so awesome. Kind of dreaming about it and dreaming about it. And we're like, this would be so great to get. Well, I went home and we started talking about it more and talking about it more. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe like I talked to the agent a little bit. I got some background. This is important. You have to talk to agents to find, see if they'll give you some information about the house, about what's going on, about their frustrations. Because sometimes agents are frustrated that they can't sell a property or that it's been sitting for so long or that they won't drop the price or whatever. So in my research, I'm like, well, they're still overpriced. I believe they're still overpriced. And I think there's an opportunity here. So I talked to my family and I said, let's put in a low ball offer. Let's just do it. What was it going to hurt? And I, I learned that they had other low ball offers that they didn't take. So I threw in an offer and to my surprise, they weren't offended by the offer. And that's one scare of people like, oh, I don't want to offend them with a low ball offer. Dude, just put it in. Who cares if it's going to offend somebody? You never know what you can get out of this deal until you try. And so I said, all right, let's go in and full disclosure, I'll tell you the, the price of it. So we pushed ourselves up a little higher and 
for this particular property, it's listed currently at 1.25 million. We offered 965,000. Okay. So 965,000, that's a big, big ask, right? Compared to 1.25. Um, they countered us at 1.15. So they came down a hundred grand right like that. And I'm like, all right, I, I think I, I think I got something here. So when I got that back, I'm like, I talked to the agent. I was like, listen, man, I mean, no offense, but I'm not going anywhere near that price. So what I did is I went up 10 grand to $975,000, right? So like they came down a hundred grand. I went up playing hardball. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, I can't afford to go much higher. So like I need this to be um, sensible. So Days go by and she's like, Sean, I'm talking to them. Just trust me. Because what I learned was there's a whole family on the other side having to make this decision. And, and it was it was a situation where the, the mother was now in a home and it was her house and they're all the heirs to it. And so they were all trying to make the decision for her. And naturally, when you get into these types of decisions, you have some people that want to sell and some people that want to hold out. And so that was the, the problem with it. Anyways, long story short, I finally get a counter at nine hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Wow! Now we're talking, and we took it. Okay, we took it. So we got a one originally priced at one point four, asking price at one two five, got it at nine hundred and ninety thousand dollars as is. So I bought it as is. I did a home inspection. Um, we found a couple little problems, but nothing major. But here's the thing: is it was like, kind of like grandma's house inside, right? There, it wasn't flashy. It needed work in the inside. And this is what I want to tell you: is like. Number one, go after the deal. You never know what you're going to be able to make work. And number two, don't be afraid to put some money into a property and make it look good. Just because it's not exactly what you want, you can get so much of a better deal because you, they didn't do the work. You're going to go do the work. I have a contractor that's going to go there. My contractor is going to go there and do the work. And I'm like, just stay at the house, paint it, put new floors in, and we're golden. So. Was there any point in the offer process where you thought, eh, it's so low, it's, it's just not even worth putting in the offer? At the very beginning, that was my thought. But what I did was called the agent, and I had a, a frank conversation with him. And I was like, listen, can you give me some sort of idea? Like, hey, if I came in at 950, would they look at it? And she's like, well, and, and this is over a couple of days. And then finally, I'm like, well, what about you know, and, and I called her back. She's like, well, if you're serious about it, put in the offer and let's see what we can do. So that gave me the confidence. Right. And then I'm like, all right, well, I'm, I'm gung ho. So once I put the offer in, then I was like, I'm getting this house. I'm getting it. Like that was my mindset. I'm getting it. I know that I can get this. I know if I use the right tactics, I can get it at a price that that's going to work for me. And it worked. How were you able to do that without getting emotional? They're coming down hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're going up 10, 10 grand. How did you, you know, display those two characteristics of negotiating and not getting overly emotional? Because I did my numbers and I knew what, you know, this is a second home. First off, first off, I'm putting 25% down. So you got to put a lot more down to make it make sense. And I'm higher interest rate than everybody else. So right now you might be hemming and hawing about six and a half percent. Well, I'm at 7.5, close to 7.5% for this property. So I'm looking at my numbers. My brother-in-law went over the numbers so many times to make sure that we could afford it. I put more money down to make my monthly payment more affordable. He put less down and he can afford more of a monthly payment, right? So that's kind of how we baked it in. But the thing was, I was like, I know where my number is and I don't want to go over this. So I had the lender do the numbers over and over at different price points with this particular property. And we said, all right, we're stopping here. And boom. Did any uh, of your family members have issues or second thoughts with offer price negotiations, things like that? Or was it kind of just whatever Sean thought was best was going to go? No, um, we talked about it. We, I made sure that they were good with it uh, before we put an offer in. Were there times when we had second thoughts? Yes. Naturally, you're buying a second home. You're thinking, wow, this is a monthly payment can I make this payment? Am I making the right decision? We're seeing a lot of like changes in the real estate paradigm, right? The, the market's changing. The, the way that we do business might change. Buyer agency commissions might change. But you know what's great? Whenever I buy a property myself, I get paid to do it, right? So 
what did I do? I took that commission and I had it pay for our closing costs. So that was a big plus for us where we didn't have as much cash coming out because I just lumped that straight in. So it was, it was nice in that regard. So you're not moving to Ocean City, um, no. second house. What's the plan with it? What, what are you going to do when you're not living there? Yeah, so we are going to use it as much as possible. First, we're going to renovate it. Um, that'll take a couple of weeks. And we're going to go... We settle Sorry, on a it. couple of weeks? Yeah, yeah. well, he said you, about you two weeks. You sure so, that's not going to... What are you going to do to it? Uh, all we're doing is painting the main level. We're not going to paint the bedrooms right now. They're beachy colors. They're more color than I would like. But at the same time, I'm like, all right, we got we to gotta stop the, the bleeding. You know, we don't want to spend too much. We got to buy furniture. There's a lot that goes into this, right? Because when you say renovating, you know, your mind kind of starts running like... Yeah, so... More of cosmetic? Cosmetic. Okay. Yeah, and this is what I tell everybody when they're my clients and I'm, I'm listing their property. I said, paint and floors are the things that you need to concentrate on, paint and floors. So we are painting the main level and in the living room there's a vaulted ceiling so it's high all right so the painting's going to cost a little bit but i'm not going into the bedrooms i'm going to save a little bit there and then the entire main level if you look right now there's about five different types of floor on that level mm -hmm. so we are doing a luxury vinyl floor uh, and the reason for that is because we are likely to airbnb this for a few weeks a year tell me it's not a gray lvp it is a gray LVP. No, Shut it's, up. It's, a, it's like a tan woodish color. We okay. haven't actually chosen it yet. So um, I'm doing a couple projects right now, and I'm going to look at those floors once they're in, and we're going to make a decision. So um, it'll be a, a lighter brown, probably, uh, look to it. And okay. So what are your – you said Airbnb. What are your expectations and hopes and experience with Airbnb? Yeah, Matt, we got to talk about this because I need some help. Um, so I did talk to Matt earlier, but now – it's crunch time and we're starting to get into this. And I know there are certain things that are really important on Airbnb, but when I looked at values, there was another house um, right around the, uh, the corner from us that was getting between 750 to $850 a night. So they're getting like five fifty five hundred dollars a week in the prime spot. Okay. In the prime months of maybe July and August, you know, that's when you're going to get your most. That was a three bedroom, two bath. What we're buying is a five bedroom, three bath. So our projection is, all right, take it on the low side between five and $7,000 a week for this property. And so I'm like, all right, well, if I could rent this out for six weeks during the prime season times five, right? Go on the, on the skimmer side of $5,000 a week. How much is that? That's $30,000 mm -hmm. for that period, right? right? So that then cuts into my mortgage by a ton, and then it makes it so much more affordable. We can afford it as is, but we don't want to have to pay that. So we're going to Airbnb it for you know six, eight weeks a year. And then what you start finding out is there's wedding season. It's you know there's golf season. This what ocean, about that? Uh, the ocean is calling music festival. Do or, you know how crazy this is? That's pretty big time. I have talked to three different real estate agents, telling them that I'm buying this place. Every one of them is like, oh, Ocean's Calling. Ocean's Calling, you're going to get a premium for that weekend. That's in September, September. I think, right? And then I was, uh, like, yesterday I was wiring my money from um, my mortgage, Morgan Stanley, and I was like, hey, today's the day, man. we gotta, we got to send that money. And he's like, awesome, man. Looking forward to it. Congratulations. Uh, first dibs on Ocean Calling weekend. So wow. he knew about it. So I'm like, oh, my gosh. So Ocean's Calling is a big deal. And um, we could we could definitely get a premium for that weekend. So um, interesting. So, yeah. So now my thing is, Matt, I'm buying this property. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about Airbnb, and if you don't know, Matt actually bought an Airbnb about what a year, two years ago, Matt. Two, coming up on two it's years. Crazy in how July. quickly that went. Yeah. Right? Wow. So I don't know the first thing about Airbnb. I learned a little bit from Matt, but I would say you know what I need to know is what are the few things that the top maybe three or four things that you would say, if I'm about to Airbnb this, what advice could you give me? Um, yeah, so right off the top, I mean, people, are, you know, they cut corners in three main ways. Number one is design and furniture. So you had mentioned, you know, grandma's stuff, grandma's furniture, get that all out of there. You, you also had mentioned you have furniture in your basement that you can use. Now, maybe it's like William sonoma Restoration Hardware, like high-end stuff. Um, it's, it's gotta be quality furniture. It's, it's gotta be well-designed. Um, another way people cut corners is photos. I mean, this is oh. not a surprise to say, oh yeah, of course. But 
there's there's also like lifestyle photos of you know having the grill going with like people in swimsuits you know at, like tastefully um in the back you know maybe have a, a drone shot from over the bay maybe have you know the front twilight shot of the house so it's not just oh yeah take professional photos check the box you know i'm in these facebook groups people are posting their professional photos and it's like yeah this is good if you're selling the house but selling the house photos is completely different than lifestyle going for a weekend going for a bachelor party going for um you know a concert going for a wedding things of that nature um you know and then finally is is pricing right and it's not just pricing it's dynamic pricing and then it's also like your minimum night stays and you know with my airbnb when i was fixing it up and i had bought it someone texted me from the previous owner who wanted to come see what we were doing and they they were they were touring in they were like oh you're not going to you know, change the prices based on what time of year it is, are you? And I just thought to myself, yeah, yeah, I am. I'm going to do what every <laughs> company, every house, every airline. You think airlines have the same prices for 4th of July and New Year's as they do for like middle of August? No, of course, there's going to be changes with demands. That's how the free market works. So understanding the like the highs and the lows and your your competition those would be a start for like the biggest mistakes to to watch out for okay yeah you gave us a lot of good nuggets all right so number one furniture um yeah we're taking out i mean there's going to be some furniture left in there and we're going to take it out however um my stuff that i'm taking down i already took down my love sack so that's a pretty pretty good couch right but that's going to be used like upstairs in kind of one of the lofty areas uh number two i have a caligaris uh uh table that's an italian pretty good stuff right name dropping over here i'm name dropping because like these were expensive now they're my secondary stuff because i bought when i bought my last house is when i got that table and it's a good table but it, it could be beat up so i gotta really look at it um number two uh what else did you say um Pricing. So pricing is big. Um, and yeah, you have to look at seasonality. And I guess, you know, I was looking at a neighbor down the street and his place was really do well done, which I'm hoping to get mine there. But it was also a smaller home. It was a waterfront, but it was a three bedroom, two bath. So I was using his numbers saying, all right, well, I think I can get a little bit more. But are there certain tools that you use, websites or, you know, whatever you use in pricing? Can you kind of go over that with us and let me know how, how to do that? Yeah, I mean, the biggest tool that I use is Price Labs. You know, if you are looking to purchase an Airbnb, uh, obviously AirDNA is good to look at what the monthly rental or what the, the nightly rental may, may be. But dynamic pricing by Price Labs is definitely the way to go. I think it's like $18 a month or so. I have two properties, so it's like 35 bucks a month instantly make it back when I get, you know, more for my money. And then one of my favorite pastimes is to eat breakfast and open an incognito mode uh, window on my browser, search for random weekends and see how I compare versus my competition. And, you know, the saying goes in the slow season, you want to be the first house booked. And in the hot season, you know, you want to be uh, almost the last house booked, right? Because if you're, if you're the first house booked, on you know the hottest weekend you're probably underpriced yeah right but if if you know you're just trying to keep the lights on make sure the pipes don't freeze you know have low occupancy in the winter or whatever the off season is yeah yeah let, let's let's get you a discount let's let's get you in so um I, I think price labs is you know the number one tool for uh dynamic pricing and i know you know in a beach town like uh ocean pines uh you know seven day minimums might be the standard but obviously you know, you can adjust that to like a three night minimum or a two night minimum if you know that there's, you know, a big event coming up. Yeah. Now, now Price Labs, is that directly tied into Airbnb where it automatically adjusts that for you? Or is that something that you have to log into and take that information? You uh, just connect the API. And so you hook up both um, accounts, Airbnb to Price Labs, and then it updates overnight uh, That's amazing. every single night. Yeah. That's like a huge tool. Like, I think you told me an example about that before. You want to tell us about that where... You were thinking pricing it here, and then you pushed it to where it said. And yeah, you know, most weekends at my little cottage outside of Charlottesville, Virginia, they get anywhere from one seventy nine to maybe like two twenty or so. But I just got a weekend for three seventy four. Wow, per night, and you know, the house is from the Civil War. It's it's a cute, you know, rustic, dare I say, house. But it's 
you know, it's not glamorous. It's not luxury. It's, it just has everything you need. But what was happening that weekend was UVA graduation, which unlike the eclipse, UVA graduation happens every single year. <laughs> yeah. So that is my totality eclipse for Airbnbs. And, 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 you know, last year I, you know, really screwed up trying to get way more money and a much longer stay when in reality, the parents that are coming in from out of town or maybe international, you know, they're, they're only there for two nights. So trying to get like four nights uh, as a minimum, you know, was a mistake. And so understanding the, the life cycle of, you know, these con consumers that are coming into town, are they coming into Ocean Pines for seven nights, for four nights? Are they coming into Charlottesville for two nights? You know, honestly, most people are coming in for two to three nights in my market. So why not open up the calendar a year and then set the price accordingly, you know, minimum stay of, of two or three nights. And if someone books, you know, three nights, six months from now, that's that's amazing. That's yeah, great. That's great. Uh, a couple other things you mentioned, and um, th this is so true. You said pictures, and you're going to make pictures different for if you were trying to sell it compared to the Air, uh, the Airbnb style. And this is exactly what we say when you're prepping your house for sale, right? Number one, you're not like I go into places and I, this is what, how I say, I was like, listen, don't take any offense to what I'm going to tell you because there's one way to live in your house. Everybody lives in their house. And if you come to my house right now, it's a wreck, but we have to get it market ready. We have to get ready for market so that we can get the best dollar, best contract. And that's going to take a little bit of, you know, putting, putting your mind in the, in the closet and saying, okay, I'm okay with this. Right. And it's hard for some people to take that criticism and say, listen, I think we should do this. It's hard for me to tell it sometimes, but in my job, I have to, I want to sell it quickly. I want to sell it for the highest price and, and get the best value. So it's interesting that you say the lifestyle photos are what, what, um, what drive this. And I was thinking of that as well, because in Ocean Pines, we have a, a golf course. We have pickleball, Matt. Let's go. Huge pickleball fan. Let's go. We've got tennis courts. We have five pools, including one indoor pool. We've got a yacht club, a restaurant at the yacht club, a bar outside, and we've got a beach club. So all of that, not only that, I'm looking at getting a boat soon. Seriously. <laughs> I don't know when. <laughs> don't let the Airbnb guests use the boat. No, no Airbnb guests using the boat. Um, kayaks. I'm going to have kayaks there, uh, paddle boards, all that kind of stuff, right? And so I'm going to be taking, and Kurt, actually, our videographer is going to come down. Now, what I, what I found out through Kurt is no videos allowed on Airbnb. Is that true? Yeah. No videos. No videos allowed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase a, a website and I'm going to have my own things on that website that will be like videos. Direct booking. Direct booking. Exactly. So I can point you to some good resources for direct booking. Okay. Um, yeah. On the topic of lifestyle, I'm going to give you the most uh, aggressive uh, Airbnb that I've found from Raw Built, the Pink Pickle Girls Trip House, Pickleball wow. and Pool. So this is in Austin, Texas. So think bachelorette party so their first photo is literally like four women holding pickleball paddles you know with the instagrammable howdy mural in the background i mean everything about this is you know screams you know instagram airbnb life i mean oh my this gosh. is like lifestyle photos to the max where in real estate you know it's uh listings you know having people in photos is kind of a faux pas yeah but in something like this you're you're almost putting yourself in their shoes of like oh this could be me playing pool this could be me playing pickleball this could be me you know getting my makeup ready or so you know hanging out like that so that's you know it's it's something to consider is when you take photos maybe have you know the kids in a kayak and you know having kids in photos you know maybe that's a different conversation or whatever sort of amenities you're going to offer consider adding people to them yeah that's that's great advice now Looking at this, you know, we're using this as a second home as well, but th there's some tidbits you can take from this. And one of the ideas that I have for ours is, listen, who uses a dining room anymore? Do you? I, I mean, not really. Not really, right? <laughs> so you're going to use the kitchen. It's an eat-in kitchen. There's going to be a table there. There's a huge living room, um, dining or family room that, that people can dine in if they want to. But my dining room, I'm like, I don't want a dining room in the dining room. So we are going to make that the pool table room or the ping pong room or the game room. That's going to be where all the games are right off that. What are place. the the Airbnb guests going to do? Because if, if you have, um, you know, one of the biggest like red flags or one of the biggest mistakes for Airbnb hosts is um, having a 
10 person, you know, occupancy and only having a seat at the table for eight people. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're going to say, Hey, we got five bedrooms, we got how many baths do you have? Three. Okay. So you can five times two, that that's easily 10 guests. And probably if you do like a pullout silver, you can probably get up to 12 or maybe even 14. Um, if you, if you have occupancy for 14, I mean, you got to have like 14 chairs somewhere in the house. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, I think what we could do is we have a table space in the kitchen area that holds one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I think it's right now it's a six person table um, where we can extend that in, into that living area. Uh, I don't know. We, we still got to configure. We settle on it tomorrow. We're going to go down there and do a lot of configuring. Um, the thing is, I just don't, I feel like there's, there's plenty of spaces and I know that we'll be able to figure it out on our own. Cause we're going to have big parties there ourselves for our family. And once we figure that out for our own family, then we'll be able to say, all right, this is how we're going to do it. But I just felt like the, the, the dining room underutilized space, and I want to maximize it for that catchy Airbnb style thing. Cause why are people going there? They're going to have fun. They're going to get away. And so I want them to get away from life and enjoy it. And so having all of those little things, and plus every room's going to have a TV in it, right? Like, so every bedroom, 55 inch at well, least. Are they going to eat their you know? meals on the pool table? Like, do they still like, dude, they're going to do Chinese well, here's, takeout. Where, here's the where thing. are they going to eat? You can get a pool table that turns into a table. Did you ever see those? No. But yeah. So I'm, there it is. It's a seven foot table that turns, or a pool table that turns into a table that can be a ping pong table, blah, blah, blah. So you get the versatility there. Now, I, I haven't bought this yet. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but those are the things that I'm thinking Okay, about. just a, a thought. Uh, maybe in your dining room, uh, this is going to be a hot take, consider a dining table, just possibly. Okay, I'll consider it. Just consider it. No, I, I will, I will. <laughs> we haven't done anything yet. Those are just the kind of the dreamy uh, thoughts that we had. Well, we'll have to um, you know, keep in touch on you know how the, the cosmetic renovations go, how the, the Airbnb process and, and setup goes, and... You know, would love to to nitpick the listing once. It yeah, goes I'm active. sure Matt will. Matt is the king of nitpicking. He will tell me <laughs> truthfully, like, dude, this furniture well, is horrible. No, but yeah, like, you you I have will. to, right? And that's what I'm trying to tell. Like, my family is like, listen, we can buy. You know, on one side, when I talk to people, they're like, listen, your your furniture is going to get beat up, so don't spend a ton of money on it, but make sure it looks good and it's comfortable. Um, so there are some cheaper options out there that you can furnish a place and make it look good, and I think that's kind of where we're aiming. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's going to be a learning process just like anything. And, and the goal here, or the, maybe the lesson here is take the chances, you know, go for it. If you, if this is something that you want in life and you want to have a, an Airbnb or you want an ocean city property or a beach property or whatever it is, this took me a lot of time, a lot of planning and a lot of saving for years to, to afford this house and to do this. And thankfully, and finally, I'm, I'm finally here and I'm, you know, excited to take that step. Um, speaking of taking steps, taking steps, Matt, how's that for, a, uh, uh, yeah, you like that transition? Yeah, transition? I mean, Matt is about to take a huge step in life. And, and that's the thing is we wanted to talk personally on this show today because, you know, me and Matt are humans and, and not only do we sell real estate, we buy real estate. Um, but Matt is, is taking the, um, you know, he's taking a dip here soon and he's, he's getting married. So congratulations. Locking it down. Matt. He's locking Thank it you. down. Good, good tying, job. Tying it up, locking it down. Yeah, so um, on that note, um, you already own an Airbnb. You rent a property here. Do you have any plans in the future? What are your goals as far as maybe a real estate thing and marriage and all that stuff as life progresses? So from a real estate perspective, um, you know, the goal is to, to purchase a house, right? And it's uh, to purchase a house in Arlington, right? And, and I think a lot of people, you know, have have that same goal. And you know, we're also wondering how the heck are we going to do this, you know, in this market, in this time with these prices, with these, this inventory level. Now, um, you know, we are, are blessed to, to be currently living in a large two bedroom condo that, that we rent where the second bedroom is, is a studio, which by the way, maybe we figure out a way to move the studio in a 1300 square foot condo into your <laughs> house, which has uh, more than 1300 square feet. It's maybe true, we find true. a way. Um, in the future, but you know, in the in the meantime, uh, my partner and I we both value kids, and yeah. so we we want to have kids. Um, we we want to have you know a basketball team, right? Like we want to have Heck yeah a large roster. Awesome. Yes, and um, you know we got to get moving and grooving on that. And um, I think it is possible to have a kid in a condo. I, I think uh, you know you go downstairs and lots of strollers rolling around, and 
Um, I, I think that that'll be the next step. And then once we're driving ourselves in, insane and bouncing off the walls and the walls are caving in, at that point, we would seriously look for um, hopefully a single family detached house, uh, possibly a townhouse, you know, Arlington, um, City of Falls Church, you know, maybe there are pockets in Alexandria, but I, I love the idea of kind of being parallel with D.C. because once you go a little south, then it makes everything more difficult, whether you're taking the metro, whether you're commuting, whether whatever your mode of transportation is. I, I like the, the I-66, the 29, the 50, the Washington Boulevard parallel-ish um, area. And so that, that'll that kind of be like, maybe, maybe call it like a five-year plan, five-year yeah. goal plan. Good, good. How does you that know- sound? I think it sounds great. You know, during that time frame, save your money because, you know, you you might not make a buyer agency commission like I just did, right? Like, <laughs> it helps, right? That helps. But I think we still will. I think we will. Um, but what I'll tell you is that I would say I've bought, and this is my fourth house that I've purchased. Uh, I purchased my, my third house or my second house in Lake Barcroft. And I bought in Lake Barcroft because it was a little more affordable. And this is in Falls Church, just outside of, of Arlington. And it was an awesome, cool mid-century modern house. I loved the house. It was a cool look to it. I loved the fact that I could walk to water and go out kayaking and fishing. And I caught m- many bass out there. I loved it. But you know what I always felt? I always felt I'm not in Arlington. Mm. I'm not in Arlington. I feel like my heart, my soul should be there. But why was that a problem? Like you're not in Arlington. A lot of a lot of people aren't in Arlington. I know, I know. But for me, I just that's where I felt like I belonged, right? And most of my business in, is in Arlington, and I felt like even though the commute from my Lake Barcroft house to my office was 12 minutes, it wasn't long. You know, now I'm in Boston in a minute. You know, and I'm in, you know, wherever in Arlington very quickly. And that little time frame, that change for me was monumental in my business and my family life. But what I'll say is I wouldn't have been able to get to where I am without doing the steps that I take. And that's the one thing about Arlington. It's very expensive. It's very hard to afford these things. And I took three, st- two steps before I could do that. And I rented in Arlington for a while, just like you. Uh, up in Boston, and in that time frame, that's when I started Orange Line Condo, and that's when you know I started pushing that whole thing, and that's where my business started to become Arlington based for the most part, right? Um, but number one, you've got to take steps to get to the final step. It doesn't just happen unless you are blessed with wealthy parents and wealthy situations. Uh, it took me buying and selling, taking the equity, buy sell, take the equity. And then finally, thankfully, luckily, getting into the house that I'm in at the right time. But was that the plan? Because when you're moving out to Lake Barcroft, that couldn't have been the plan was, hey, I'm going to buy this house and then sell it a couple years later, move back. It wasn't. You know, when I moved to Lake Barcroft, I was like, all right, this is it. This is this is my spot. You made it. it, Right. I made it. It's awesome. And, you know, you have to think back on that time frame. And right then is when we found out that, that Kristen was pregnant. So I'm like, oh, wow, this changes the dynamic. Right? Pregnant with number... With Brooke. Yeah, number, number one. one. Yeah. And so that was... And she's now nine, right? And so once you start thinking of when you have kids, you're like, all right, well, where do I want them to go to school? Where do I want their education? And my wife was very pushy on this. And she was like, I want our kids to stay in the same school district the whole way up. So we better find the right one and we better move quickly. You don't want to do private school? No, um, you know, the reason is it's either, I, I felt like Arlington schools were the best around for me, for us. And so that's why we moved back. Instead of paying the money for private school, I was like, let's put that in a more expensive mortgage because what happens in good school districts, your prices increase with that, right? And so if I can save the money from private school and put it into a mortgage, I think that's better off for me. And that's the decision we made because we were, we were close. We were going to go either Catholic or, or private school, and we decided to then move, and we bought just at the right time when COVID was angry and hitting hitting us, I bought a house. Are you nervous at all that Arlington County would redistrict you to a different school district? Uh, you know what? We're very close to those lines, and yes, you always think about that. Um, right now, we're at Cardinal Elementary School, which is amazing. It's a brand new school. 
The good thing is we're just north of Washington Boulevard, so I think the cutoff line would be Washington Boulevard and George Mason, and we're kind of right inside that pie. But two blocks up from us is um, Yorktown High School. Right now, we're Washington Liberty. And we chose this house, honestly, because it was Washington Liberty. We kind of wanted our kids to go to Washington Liberty and, and kind of follow Matt Layton in his, his hey, progression. Hey, WNL grad. That's through right. Through and through. That's right. So we liked that city feel of the school, and um, we liked the ability to walk to Boston and walk to Westover. So that's my advice to you is like, listen, you're not going to be able to f- afford maybe. Yeah, what was the what was the takeaway I, there? I don't was that to, to sell during COVID <laughs> when you make yeah. like the most amount of money you what can a, on a house? I guess the thing is, Sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you go don't. back 10 years and, and, and buy a property, you know, go when life tells you to buy and sell when life tells you to sell. And sometimes you're not going to be able to afford the lion village house right off the bat, because I know Matt and I know lion village. He screams around lion. Village, I think I'll but, buy when my bank account says I'll buy not when life says I'll buy. Yeah. Well, I mean both, right? I mean, life is part of your bank account. And so, you know, I wish you luck. And, uh, that's the advice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good luck. Um, good luck. Uh, when you have kids, think about the schools, think about you, where you want them to go and, um, save your money. Yeah. Cause I'm not interested in the, the transactional cost of multiple real estate purchases and, and sales and purchases and sales. I was talking to a, a client and they were, you know, only going to be here a couple of years and talking about, Hey, what, what should they buy? I'm like, well, if, if you know, you're going to be gone in two years, like the percent chance that you would buy something, it appreciates in value and then you make money. It, it, it would just make more sense to rent something like a little bit nicer for like one or two years and then just leave and, you know, kind of take the key and walk away rather than uh, purchasing something and then it, it possibly losing money. And then you're out like 50 grand when you when you try to sell. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to live here for two years, it doesn't make sense because the transactional costs to that are going to take all your equity if you if you got any equity. So it's better if you're a short term kind of person. Don't don't buy. You don't need to. But when you're looking to live here now, what happens is life changes. You have kids, you have more kids, you have a smaller place, you need a bigger place. This happens all the time. We see it every day with our clients. Why are they moving? Because they have growing families and these families are going to make the decisions for you to move. And so for me, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to gain equity in this place and I'm going, this is the strategic thing. It was, I'm going to buy this house because I love this house and see where life takes me. And life took me a direction. And I said, all right, it's time to sell this house and move to where we want our kids to go to school. And that was it. And so what I'll say is there was, there's really, it's hard to plan it out because life changes constantly. And so, you know, Go with where your heart is. Well, since I am getting married, it means I'm also having a bachelor party, Ah. Sean. (laughs) And I am doing a giveaway. If you're watching on YouTube, I will give you $5 if you can correctly guess the city that the bachelor party is taking place. And I'll I'll give you three hints. Okay. Um, Hint number one is that it is a nonstop flight from DCA under three hours. Okay. So think... East Coast ish with the draw circle within three hours. Okay. Hit number two is that it is a, a smaller city. Okay. So mm-hmm. it's it's not like a New York. It's not like a Boston. It's uh the population's between 150 and 350,000 people. So kind of that, you know, smaller city. And then uh hint number three is that it it has a downtown area, but it also has outdoor activities nearby Mm. okay so drop your comments your guess you only get one guess i'm giving away money here you only get one guess drop your guess in the comments section below if you're listening on spotify or apple go to youtube drop your guess in for five dollars that's awesome am i going you're going oh yeah i am going so i already know you're in it's gonna be yeah if i've already told you 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 can't uh you're ineligible i can't say anything all right sean that's uh Super exciting personal stuff. Let's get back to the pod and in or out, whether okay. you are in or out on um, a house actually in Arlington, a house that we have toured before. Sean, let me reintroduce you to 3612 North Glebe Road, listed for $4.9 million, six bedrooms, seven baths, 5,100 square feet. Sean, this is the famous Birchland estate that has been completely uh, reprise and awaits its new stewards sitting on one of the highest points in Arlington. This property will amaze you with its rooftop views and 
envelope you into its private tree canopy. Okay, this this is going to be a, a lengthy description, but it dates back to the Civil War. The property hand uh, property just uh, changed hand just a few times since its land grant from Lord Fairfax in the 1720s. Due to the location and elevation, in 1861, the original mansion became the headquarters of Civil War General Winfield Hancock, home to Spy Tree, a significant century post protecting Washington, D.C. So, Sean, it mixes the old with the new, the modern with the classic for a six-bedroom, seven-bath, 5,000-square-foot house for four point nine million dollars mm. are you in or are you out <clears throat> matt you and i went to this property at the brokers open and it was amazing it did not i mean like i was wowed by it i i thought it was super cool it's a really big house i feel like it's bigger than five thousand square feet don't mm-hmm. you it, i mean that thing has to be that. like six or seven thousand yeah. square feet that thing it's is got the, huge the the whiskey lounge in the basement the whiskey lounge i took a picture of that i was like all right maybe our new podcast area in my basement is going to look like this um what really like got me one was the owner suite, right? The upstairs mm. vaulted ceilings in that owner suite. But on top of that, you had a rooftop terrace with a bar. It was awesome. Um, really well done. Big, big house. Do I need a house this big? No. Is it too big? Maybe. Um, but I love the outdoor space. Wait, is this I- bigger than your house? It's way bigger than my house. Really? Don't you feel like it's bigger than my well, house? Well, I, I know there's feel, but there's also... How large How large is your house? It's like 5,000 square feet. Okay, well, this one says it's 5,100 square there's feet. There's no way. This is way bigger than my house. Okay. This has to be six to 7,000 square feet. I'm telling you. like, Why no would way. they only list it for 5,000 square feet? I don't know. Maybe mine's smaller than that then because this, this okay. felt like an animal compared to mine. You know how large your yeah. own house is. I'm not going to fight you on that one. Yeah, so um, I would say that this is way bigger than mine, but... Um, so is your house worth this amount? No, God, no. God, no. Um, this is a very unique property. I love it. I would buy it. I think right now at the 4.9 price point, it's just too rich uh, for me and for the area. It's a, it, it's, a, it's a good location in North Arlington, but it's also facing Glebe Road, right? But it's not like that's prohibitive, right? It's not that bad. It's a good property. It doesn't even feel like it's on Glebe, it, though. Yeah, it's kind of It's hidden. off, and then it's on the hill. Yeah. Um, so am I in or out on this property? I'm in. I'm in on this property. I would buy this property. I don't know what price I'd pay for it, though. Like, can you, as my agent, help me in getting this maybe in the three million range? Three, three point nine. Can we get a million dollars? Three point nine. Well, Sean, I kind of feel similarly. I I love the history. I love the dual, you know, front porch. You know, in addition to the rooftop, um, I love many things about it. The only thing I don't like is is the price. Now, location, you know, Glee Bro, that may scare some people off. Is it in an actual neighborhood or are you kind of just secluded? I think you, you're you kind of just on your own a little bit. Yeah, you're right. Um, again, you know, love love everything about it except for the price point. I I had a number in mind. Um, it was $4 million, which now sounds like a little high because if I was going to do this for four or, you know, the best house in Lion Village for four, I would do the best house in Lion Village, Me like too. hands down. But this has got something that you know no other houses have, and that's kind of that that Civil War history, which I, th- I think you just got to find someone that's that's gonna it's gonna love that. You know, the whiskey room is cool downstairs, but that's all it's got. It's got it's got no no basement. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I'm I'm out unless you know I say four, but it it may have to it may have to be three point nine. We're right around the same price, so yeah. that's that's good that we're thinking kind of the same way. And yeah, if it was between this house and something in Lion Village, I'm Lion Village over and over and over again because of the location. I'm I would rather be walkable walkability to Clarendon than kind of secluded by myself on this plot of land. And you know I'm all about neighbors and I want to talk to my neighbors and be close to people and that kind of thing. But if you're looking for more of a secluded kind of rustic awesome house this is it it's really a i good think property. that's why someone's gonna buy it is because it yeah. is so secluded i mean could you imagine the house parties that you oh, could throw gosh, here with yeah the cars pulling up and the lawn and the elevation yeah did this have a garage yeah isn't Does that it? a garage where's the garage i don't know if it has a garage they didn't have garages in the 1860s yeah yeah so that's one thing this lacks but it's a beautiful driveway you got like a 13 kind of car thing. driveway yeah uh just amazing. no garage 
Well, cool. let us know if you're in or out in the comments section below. And hey, Matt, for can, Sean I, can and myself, I interrupt you once? Yes. What do you got? Um, you know, while this was personal today and we were talking about our personal things, um, I did have, I just wanted to dedicate this show to one of my clients and friends over the years. He passed away this week, Alan Hickling. Um, he was in his 80s. And Alan, I, I had bought and sold some properties for him and for his son. And uh, he was just an amazing guy. He was in his eighties. He would call me. He's like, Hey Sean, let's go get a beer. We'd, we'd go up to dogfish head and we'd sit there and talk. And this guy was so interesting. He would talk about his past and he was actually a, a pilot. Um, and he worked for, he, he was in the Royal Navy. He had the, uh, speed record over the Atlantic at one point. Um, and he was also a top gun flight instructor. Hmm. Like, that's who this guy was. He was just a phenomenal guy. He passed away this week, and, um, you know, we'll miss you. So this this show is dedicated to, to Alan Hickling. Thanks. Rest in peace, Alan. Thank you, Sean. That was, that was very nice. For Sean and myself, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, we'll see you then. Take care.